everything in Europe, every aspect of uh, financial services, there is, a, there is going to be a fintech solution for it. Um, one of the big things is really the move, I think just to give you a flavour, the, if we take the digital banks, which may have started off with a, a fairly sim a simple offering when they first launched, um, now they are bundling together different services which might be insurance or cryptocurrencies or credit. We're seeing also a lot of services uh, for banks that are fixing banks, whether it's in the analytics field, um, creating new core banking experiences. There is something, there is uh, really something for every single part of the fintech chain. Well, the answer to that probably is both. Um, so we're seeing great scaling by some of our digital banks, and we've got really good digital banks in the UK. And they are they are really scaling. So a couple of them um, have just launched in. They certainly launched all over Europe. They're launching in Australia, certain markets in Asia. They're all looking to the US. So that's you know that that's a global footprint that they are developing. But on the B two B side, we're also seeing a huge demand um, and growth by some of the great B two B companies that we have in the UK. So the companies that are here today, one is a B two B and one is a B two B two C. Um, okay. So once they've got their offering right, and once they know they've got a you know a core product that it actually has a market, then it's not going to stop them. So scaling, absolutely. The, the regulator in the UK is seen um, as a key part of the UK's success in fintech. The regulator is encouraging to fintechs, but at the same time protecting consumer, which is exactly where you want a regulator to be, whether which other side of the fence you are on. So the regulator is um, is has been a great part of the fintech growth story. There is also regulation from Europe, so we've got Method 2, we've got PSD2 and um, GDPR. So they're all different parts of regulation. PSD2 and the whole open banking movement is very early days. And um, I'd be amazed if anyone other than a, someone who's really specialising in that could, uh, could give you a really in-depth view of that. But it is something that has been brought in to open up the old ways of banking and to, and to make banking and financial services more accessible, more competitive, and uh, for the benefit of the consumer. They're predicting, it's predicted that this year, or maybe next year is going to be a tipping point for fintech adoption in Europe. So up until now, we've seen um, digital banks be treated as slightly interesting um, innovations. It's very likely that we are going to see them go much more mainstream as people begin to trust them. There is exactly the same level of cover and the safety of your money as there is with your traditional bank. There have been lots of outages in tech downs in traditional banks recently. So I think that people now have had a few years to get used to working with digital banks and um, I think we will I think we will see a tipping point for if it's not this year, then next year. That point it's a bit like in retail, the moment when online shopping started to overtake on the high street. We are probably reaching that point from a consumer perspective. From um, a B2B perspective in terms of incumbents, there's a huge appetite, a huge appetite for fintechs that are actually fixing every single point um, of the financial services experience. So there's an enormous engagement between what we would call the incumbents and the fintechs.